not chicken, you're a turkey. In my previous English to English translator video, which some of you may well have come from, I covered Thanksgiving and the story behind it. The story that's told in your schools, however, isn't the whole picture. There's some rather pertinent details that this story, and indeed the American education system, glosses over pretty darn hard. The truth is, it's complicated. First off, the food's all wrong. Well, mostly. So typically, when you think of a Thanksgiving meal, you think of a giant turkey with various side orders, typically including mashed potato and cranberry sauce, right? Well, that's what the modern American might eat on Thanksgiving, but it doesn't really resemble what the pilgrims probably ate at that first Thanksgiving. For instance, there is no evidence at all that specifically turkey was on offer at the original three-day feast. William Bradford had sent some people to catch fowl, but these could have been any wild American bird, for instance ducks, swans or geese, and some historians suspect that the meat of choice was likely one of those rather than turkey. The main reason these foods really caught on was because of Sarah Josepha Hale, who aside from campaigning for the adoption of Thanksgiving as a national holiday, was also a popular editor for Godey's Ladies Book, and she was also the one who set the trend of what a Thanksgiving meal should look like, including a roast turkey as the centrepiece of choice. It's highly likely that mashed potatoes didn't make an appearance either, or any kind of potatoes for that matter, since potatoes weren't found in North America at the time, and they weren't popular enough in Europe as a staple crop to warrant the pilgrims actually bringing them over with them at all. Cranberry sauce is yet another anachronistic Thanksgiving staple. At the time of the pilgrims landing, the sugar needed to make the cranberry sauce would have been a very expensive luxury item. So it's very highly unlikely that they would have had cranberry sauce, and though cranberries were native to the USA at that time, they probably didn't eat them as part of their meal. In fact, cranberries have only officially been part of a typical Thanksgiving meal since about 1864, when General Ulysses Grant ordered that they be served to his soldiers with their holiday meal. Prior to that, there is evidence that there did exist a sweet sauce made from cranberries, but only from about 1663 onwards. Speaking of sugar, the pilgrims probably wouldn't have had butter or wheat flour either, which also means no pies. Secondly, this wasn't the first Thanksgiving. This inaccuracy is twofold, in the sense that it wasn't the first Thanksgiving, and it also wasn't the first Thanksgiving. Many Thanksgivings had happened prior to 1621, and the Pilgrim's Feast wasn't even referred to as a Thanksgiving until at least 1830. In addition, the giving of thanks for successful harvests were, and still are, a part of Native American traditions. So perhaps it could be said that Thanksgivings weren't even the Pilgrim's idea in the first place. Speaking of the Native Americans, some sources suggest they might not have even been invited to the feast at all. National Today, for instance, claims that they merely came to investigate cannon and gunfire that was being let off in celebration of the successful harvest. Thirdly, it wasn't, and arguably still isn't, all sunshine and lollipopsky. It's believed by many people that the Mayflower story paints an overly rosy picture of settler native relations and glosses over subsequent tension and marginalization of the Native Americans by the settlers. Not least, multiple massacres and other such marginalizing measures possibly driven by Manifest Destiny. For instance, there's the Indian Removal Bill of 1830, which led to the ousting of native tribes from their homelands, often referred to as the Trail of Tears. For these reasons, among many others, many refuse to celebrate Thanksgiving, and some, since 1970, instead hold a national day of mourning on Thanksgiving Day at Coles Hill in Plymouth. Historian David J. Silverman, writing in the New York Times, explains that even prior to the Pilgrims' arrival, the Wampanoag had long been the target of kidnap by European explorers, who would often either sell them into slavery or train them as interpreters and guides. Incidentally, this is thought to be why Squanto knew English. The friendship between the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag was also very short-lived, and despite a peace treaty between them, tensions eventually mounted between the two groups, eventually culminating in King Philip's War in 1675. Next up, who exactly are you giving thanks to? Not only was the first Thanksgiving not actually a Thanksgiving, there appears to be some confusion in the modern era over who or what the thanks is and was being given to. Some seem to think that it's the Wampanoag that are being thanked for helping the pilgrims with their harvest. However, when Abraham Lincoln officially proclaimed Thanksgiving as a national holiday, he said that it was supposed to be a day of thanksgiving and praise to God. Indeed, prior Thanksgivings by European colonists were also meant to be directed towards God, so it does make a whole lot of sense for Lincoln to proclaim it as such. And just to round us off, one slightly more light-hearted inaccuracy just for the end of the video, the turkey alone is not what makes you sleepy. If you end up in a food coma after your Thanksgiving dinner, don't pin all the blame on the turkey. 
Like the vast majority of meats, turkey has a very high tryptophan content. Tryptophan is an amino acid which, by way of niacin and serotonin, your body eventually turns into melatonin, the chemical which lets your brain know it's time to have a kip. People often like to claim that it's the turkey's high tryptophan content that actually causes this. In actual fact, what causes it is the protein in the turkey combined with the high carbohydrate content of the side dishes. So yeah, if you lay off the carbs on Thanksgiving, you'll probably also avoid the tryptophan coma. And that is all for this episode of It's Complicated. Thank you very much for watching, make sure you subscribe, and be sure to ding the little bell by the subscribe button so you know when I upload. And I promise I do upload, it just takes ages for me to do so. And with that, I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta!